welcome back to another episode of Honestly Bilal. I'm your host, Bilal Ahmed, and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Toledo. And this is Honestly Bilal, the show for the aspiring ophthalmologist, where I sit down and talk with medical students who are interested in ophthalmology, residents training in ophthalmology, and current ophthalmologists in the field today. My guest today is Dr. Lindsay Diandrade. She is a clinical assistant professor at the University of Iowa. Dr. Diandrade is the uh, pediatric ophthalmologist and strabismic surgeon. Uh, Dr. Dean Jarrett, thank you so much for being with me. Uh, you know, I, I shot you an email after Dr. Oding requested, you know, he put in a good word for you and said you'd be a great guest. So no pressure, but it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. Big, big act to follow, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so let's get started with your, you know, your origin story is what I like to call it. So what got you interested in ophthalmology? When did, you know, you find a, uh, a calling to the field and how did that story develop? Okay. Um, I have a little bit of a circuitous path. I, my grandfather is actually a pediatric ophthalmologist, which is, we'll get to what I do now. Uh, but I spent all of, I mostly spent all of like high school saying I'm not going into medicine. Then I went to college and I studied as an engineer and um, decided to go into medical school, but then spent medical school saying like, I'm not going to do ophthalmology, their eyes, I'm not sure. Um, Thought I was going to do pediatrics because I really like working with kids. Then did my surgery rotation and enjoyed kind of the faster pace and more hands-on and problem solving, which when I studied as an engineer, you do a lot of that. Sure. Um, so that led me to thinking I needed something more surgical. I thought maybe it'll be gyne because it had a mix. Then I did ENT and I was like, man, this is even better. And then in May of my third year, I did ophthalmology and it just like clicked, which is crazy because I spent a lot of time saying that's not what I was going to do. Uh -huh. um, but I kind of dove right in. I um, spent some time at the VA. I spent time in our clinics here. The mentors were amazing. The residents were amazing. I loved that, you know, you were sometimes in clinic, you were sometimes in the OR. Um, you could see what was wrong, right? Like you can look in the eye and see what the problem is mm -hmm. and then fix it. Right. So that just like totally fit with how my brain works. Mm -hmm. And then knowing how awesome the people were, I was like, all right, I got to do it which was terrifying, like in the end of your third year. So I took um, a research block in July and worked with Dr. Aaron Shriver, who's actually the um, president of WIO. So it's a small world, maybe women in ophthalmology, we can talk about that later. Um, did a whole month with her. I got two publications. You know, I worked with the residents. I did call shifts with them. I did a, f um, a few other blocks in the clinic and, um, you know, here I am. So I'm super happy it worked out that way is definitely a lot of me changing my mind. Um, but I'm super happy that I did it. Well, that's great. It's a good story to hear that, you know, sometimes I think it's good to go off the path and be like, well, let me try something else first. And then, you know, fate will call you where yeah. it will, yes, you know, so I think it's really exactly. cool. Story. And, um, you know, it's always interesting to hear the perspectives of uh, family and medicine and, and how that can guide you or dissuade you or, you know, how you mm -hmm. find your own fit in the world, no matter what. So I think it's interesting as well. Uh, you know, one thing I want to want to ask you about is you're one of my few guests who is actually specialized in pediatric uh, ophthalmology and surgery mm -hmm. surgery. So, what is it that drew you specifically to? I know you mentioned that uh, you know you had a little bit of interest in pediatrics, but do you think that it's um, you know do you think it's one of those fields where you need to if you're in ophthalmology already uh, as a resident, for example, do you think it's one of those fields where you need to know oh do I like working with pediatrics already or can you find it to be sort of different than you know pediatric rotation in medical school? Oh, it's definitely way more like being an ophthalmologist than being a pediatrician. So if you aren't into your pediatrics rotation in general, I wouldn't let that sway you away from it. I think it's, you know, it's great because it allows you to see a spectrum of patients and a spectrum of pathology. Mm -hmm. And I know when Dr. Andrea Tooley was on, she talked about how oculoplastics does a ton of different things. Yeah. And pediatrics is kind of the same way. So there are people that, you know, you can do in the eye surgery like cataracts. Um, you can do uh, external surgery, like some people do peds and plastics. We do obviously strabismus surgery and that's outside of the eye. So I think it's nice that, you know, you're not just seeing and doing one thing. Um, it allows for a lot of continuity. Um, and I just think kids are so fun. Like it's really cool. You know, it's cool to see an older person get their vision back after cataracts, but it's like super awesome to see a five-year-old who's no longer getting picked on because their eyes are straight. Yeah. You know, so there's definitely, um, knowing that you're affecting people for the rest of their lives is really cool. Um, yeah. But in strabismus, we do adults too. So we're not just, just with kids. Um, but I wouldn't be 
afraid of children because you know we you learn how to work with them and it's definitely um, easier than I thought it was going to be but I think a lot of residents are definitely afraid um, afraid of kids a little bit but don't be it's super fun got it so keep an open mind I guess and it's, 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 it's sure. pediatrics if you're not interested so that's good to know you know I want to hear that perspective and it's really nice I'll also add that when you're a resident this is a really nice way to kind of get people started in surgery here at Iowa even in the first year they have this kind of hodgepodge rotation and they're coming onto the ped service and we let them do some muscles you know it's a nice way to ease in it's not necessarily inside the eye but a good way to you know start your surgical skills and have exposure to operating in general so we we try to give people exposure early and maybe that'll sway more people to go into it hard to know very cool so another uh, you know opportunity that you you uh, took part in this this weekend was the women ophthalmology conference uh, you mentioned dr schreiber who's the president of that initiative and uh, you know, talk about why women ophthalmology, whether it's in person or virtual, is an important initiative. Uh, what you took away from it, some things that you really uh, were excited about hearing after joining this weekend uh, to hear what people across the country are talking about. And, uh, you know, I think it's more important than ever to touch on why we need to support initiatives like this and really all come together and uh, recognize the, the uh, strengths of these kind of initiatives. So, you know, talk about women ophthalmology and uh, what, what got you involved. Um, so I started actually at Women in Ophthalmology my um, PGY2 year here at Iowa as a resident. Um, and again, I can credit, you know, it all comes back to the great program at Iowa in my mind, because Tom Oding made it a priority to get all of the female residents at WIO. So all of my years of training, all of the women went. You know, we went with research projects, but we were supported within the department to submit our projects, and then we were all able to go, which is huge, you know, especially you're sending out a whole chunk of your residents, the male residents are covering for you. So I think that kind of sets us up for knowing that this is a valuable thing. Um, and every year that I've gone, I've taken away something, you know, a little bit different based on my point, like where I am in my career and where I am in my life. Um, but it's so inspiring to hear from women all around the country and all their different roles. You know, so we're hearing from department chairs like um, Catherine Colby, we're hearing from the future president of the AAO, past presidents of the AAO, and you know, you, you hear about their career path, how they were supported and how they got there. And then you also hear about their family life, mm -hmm. which um, I recently had a child and that like gives me a whole new perspective on, you know, how, how do these women do it? Having that support um, and knowing that it's possible is like, maybe sounds like silly, but it's super important. It makes you definitely feel reassured knowing these women were at my point and look at where they got and look at the men and the other women who supported them to get there. Um, and you know, it's, there's research, there's kind of um, things that are outside of ophthalmology, like there's watercolor class. And when it's in person, there's wine tasting, which is lovely. So they do a nice job of kind of giving you a way to relax and then also learn while you're there. Um, so that's great. Awesome. Yeah. I was texting some, uh, some fellow uh, medical students who are, we're taking it in uh, the conference over the weekend and they really had a good time it seems like and really uh, took a lot from the mentorship aspect from it uh, you know the social aspect from it and even those virtual i think it's really nice that the event was still held and uh, seems like a lot of people took away a lot of, a lot from it uh and uh you know looking forward to seeing it continue to grow and uh you know inspiring a lot of people down the road as well including myself you know i have two sisters so i know that's, that's kind of important to me as well so you know um anyway. i will add they're really supportive of trainees including medical students. Every year I've gone, there have been more medical students. So for those of people listening that are maybe earlier on in their medical school career and they're interested in ophthalmology, submit something to this conference. And it's a great way to kind of get your foot in the door um, with a really strong emphasis on mentoring. So I talked to you about the president of VAO, department chairs, Dr. Aaron Shriver, who's here is the president of UIO. If you have research there, they're gonna see you, they're gonna talk with you and they're gonna help you succeed in the field even from a young point in training. Yeah, that's awesome. And then, you know, like this one thing, you know, people out there who are listening, you know, there's, there's research ab abstracts you can submit. There's presentation awards. Uh, I know one of your residents, Dr. Warren, just, re uh, you know, she got an award uh, at, the, at the conference as well. So, you know, they really do, it looks like, you know, they really want to emphasize the, the growth of the trainee and see how that develops. So uh, exactly. 
very cool initiative. So Dr. Indrati, let's talk a little bit about Iowa. I mean, you went to medical school there, you went to residency there, you left for a fellowship for, at UCLA for a little bit, but you're back now as an assistant professor. So what's it like to start from that journey, you know, as a medical student who found ophthalmology at, you know, at Iowa to now be, uh, you know, prof assistant professor there? Yeah, I feel really fortunate to be back. Um, it's an awesome place to be. Um, as I alluded to when I talked about my journey, it was being in this department that I was inspired to go into ophthalmology. Um, when I was applying to residency, I have obviously lived in Iowa a long time. I was single. I was like, this is my chance. I'm going to go live somewhere cool. You know, I'm going to go to Colorado and I'm going to ski all the time. I'm moved to the big city. And I interviewed all over and just was drawn to the people here. That's why I came back. I mean, I think the community within the residents who were all invested in me, the faculty, you know, the, that atmosphere is so important because pretty much anywhere you train, you're going to do surgery, you're going to see patients. Obviously there are things that vary, but having the support and the people invested in you as a person and as a physician is something that I found nowhere else compared to here. Um, so I think it was you know, that thought that I had beforehand that led me to stay here really persisted and was like exemplified throughout my training here. Um, as Dr. Oding mentioned, you know, something always happened, like residents have things come up in their lives and that definitely happened in my class and happened in other classes and people are, you know, we all stepped up, we took call for each other, we hung out with each other. Um, people like Tom Oding are a big part of that. You know, he dresses up as Santa every year for all of the kids in the department and like has everyone sit on their his lap and you know talks to them about what they're going to get and if they've been good kids and bad kids, you know so little things like that that you mm -hmm. can't necessarily pick up on a day interview and they're not included in the rankings but that kind of soul of the program is what makes it such a great place to be and such a great place to train wow. um, so coming back it just feels a little bit surreal um but it's so nice to be in this environment that really is collegial and really supportive. And I feel like that support that I had as a resident is going to continue as, you know, I work my way into practice. Um, and I also love that now that I'm like operating and running clinics, I have all these great mentors here to help me along the way, because, you know, it's not like you go one day from being a trainee to a faculty and you actually magically know everything. It's obviously a process. So I love that I have these people here to help me along the way. Awesome. So, you know, with that, you've talked about some people who have mentored you and, and uh, you know, who've got you to where you are today and the people in that department. So, you know, going forward, just finishing up here, you know, a lot of us this year are a little bit uneasy about how the process is going to go, finding our fit, for example, that you talked about. And, uh, you know, going through, I mean, beyond that, you know, going through residency training, there's, some, there's a learning curve in ophthalmology uh, that first year when you're a resident, I've, I, everybody tells me. And then after that, there's, you know, the idea of growing and becoming the senior and then, you know, giving back to residents and trying to, you know, coach them through things and uh, being that leader. So, you know, any advice you have for us going forward, how to, you know, make the best of the time and, and, you know, really just embrace ourselves with uh, what's going to come and enjoy it. Yeah, I think you just it, always have to be ready to say yes, which I know I'm not the first person to say that and I'm not going to be the last, but, you know, always be ready to say you'll take that case to the OR, to say you'll go with the plastics fellow to repair the lid lack in the middle of the night. Um, you know, say yes to like do the chart review or even see extra patients in clinic. You know, those things, they all really come back to help. You know, they help you gain respect from the people training you. They help you kind of care for your co-residents and your co, you know, your coworkers. Um, and I think saying yes and showing you're invested and showing you're a hard worker provides you more opportunities afforded later. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to be in the ER all night on some crazy call and you're just wanting to going to want to go sleep and maybe the plastics fellow and the senior resident could repair that thing without you. But if you go up there that night, you're getting surgical skills, you know, and then the plastics fellow is going to remember and they're going to offer you things later on. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just really immersing yourself, saying yes, you know, if, reading on the weekends, doing those things so you know what you're saying yes to is important. Sure. Um, but don't necessarily hesitate because you're not, not an expert yet because we're there to teach you. Sure. Um, so jump in, put yourself out there, but then also don't be afraid to say, I'm here and I want to do this, but you need to coach me through it because I've never done it before. And finding that balance can be a little bit tricky, but that's what 
everyone in whatever department you go to, they're there to teach you and help you succeed and will really respect any enthusiasm or kind of go for attitude that you have. Very cool. Yeah, I think it's the best part of being, uh, you know, in this, uh, being the host is, is very interesting because I get all these, this wisdom and these perspectives from people like you who really explain, you know, the same, maybe sometimes similar sentiments, but in different ways to, of thinking about it. And I think the, you know, the real life example of, you know, being in the ER all night and then having the opportunity to do something uh, instead of just asking for help, you know, instead of if, if you need, if you can do it, do it. I think that's interesting to think about. And I'll try to keep that in the back of my head uh, and try to embrace that uh, mentality as well as I go forward. So Dr. Dean Jotty, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your, you know, your time, your story, uh, giving us a bit of what, what got you to where you are today. And I hope all the applicants out there and medical students who are interested in ophthalmology take away something from it. Uh, and uh, hopefully we meet you someday in person. Yeah, that sounds great. Anyone is welcome to reach out to me with questions or um, anything along the application process. Happy to help. So. All righty. Well, you take care. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.